Danny boy, welcome back. List Cloggers, episode something. After the grand final <laughs> show, I'm excited to be here with you. And uh, how you going, my friend? We've had some good news this week. We've had some really good news this week. We're back, baby. Vic's back. We've cleaned up all the sports. Vic back to back to back. Party time in Victoria. Dan's letting us out of the house. So it's a good time to be a Victorian. I not tell that much, mate. But good, we're here. We're episode four. Four more than what... Well anticipated, so haven't cancelled us yet, which is good. And no one can cancel us because we are the boss, they, but yeah, I was gonna say they can't. Mm. Well, let's not say they can't, hopefully not. Uh, mate, welcome to the show, by the way. It's been fantastic to have you on, um, as per usual. So good. What you're drinking a water while I'm talking to you. I don't know why you're doing that, but um, I love that you're hydrated, and that's one of yeah, the yeah, you actually need water to survive you if you're new to the human body like I did. You need water to survive, yeah, you do. You do, yeah, you're right. So just check in with everyone, make sure everyone's hydrated. And mate, it's as we said, big week. We've got some big news. COVID 19. I see you later, alligator. We're back, baby. Victoria is back. We're home by next week. We're going to be in the stewed. Um, this could be the last one. So that you know what that means. Beers. You know what that means, else? We're getting we're getting now the, the list cloggers in. So if you want to come on the show, make sure you are staying tuned because you are going to be coming into the stewed. With Daniel and I, and we're going to be having chats, and we're going to be solving life's problems, um, as all these clubbers do, because uh, that's what we do. And now, mate, quickly, before we get into the show, what was your thoughts on the weekend? What would you get up to? How was it? Uh, no, it was uh, a good weekend, mate. Obviously, a big weekend of sport. Um, hey, couldn't... don't care. Let's just start the show. You do this every time. <laughs> <laughs> what do it every time to me? You do it every time we intro. You seem to fail. Liz Gloggers, we're back. Episode four. Uh, uh, very exciting. Oh, sorry, I, want to do one. I heard you do one, so I want to do one. <laughs> First up, my friend, what are you up to? How's the day been? How's the week been? As you said, we've we've covered it all already. I've said it 16 times. But mm. I'm just excited. COVID laws are down. Um, life looks like it's getting back to normal. How are you feeling? Feeling tired. Still at Craggy Burn, working flat out, um, which has obviously been last... We're- 119 yeah. days or whatever, carrying the economy has been pretty tough on my back. So it'd be great if Victoria's to help me um, take some of the load off my shoulders. It'd be going to be a good feeling for me. But excited, happy to be able to see some people. I know you're trying to catch up I catch up with me, but I'm just fully booked, mate, um, now until mm. literally who knows. So but it's good. Good to be back. We're back, Vix. Yeah, and just on behalf of everyone in Victoria, we'd just like to thank you personally for holding up the economy at this time. So thank you so much for all the work you're doing at, at Craigie Berm, sweeping those um, floors and keeping the floor clean so that people could be safe and, nope. and work. Mm. No, no, don't need to say thanks to me, mate. Love bloody, I'd bloody do it again, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> but all honestly, thank you to all the the workers, the no, uh, essential welcome. workers out there that have been doing their thing because we honestly could not be where we are without you guys and girls mm. and especially the tradies and nurses, the doctors, all those people who, even though they are very successful in their professions, it doesn't mean they're not list cloggers in, in some aspect. Um, and we do love them and we do want them on the show. So make sure Oh, that mate, they, we do. We'd love a doctor who just doesn't know really what's going on, but he's a list clogger. Like imagine he's, he's, a list clogger doctor. Like, that's actually dangerous. Like, there'd be heaps of them. There'd be a bunch of them. There'd be a bunch of doctors out there just like, I'm just winging this today. And just give everyone, oh, you got, you know, you have a cold. <laughs> Sore arm, cold. <laughs> <laughs> Take a pan- Panadol is literally a doctor's band aid, like a full back on. You could say Panadol oh. for anything, and you're just good. Do you know what really and just that just like really hurt me a little bit? But just recollection, I don't know, that's not a word. Recollected in my mind when you said that. It's like mm. when you're playing footy, and any person that's played footy at any level would know this. But there's like that physio or doctor at every club that you go there, and you're like, mate, like got a sore knee, and they're like, nah, mate, it's your back. Yeah. You're like, mm, nah, mate. Pretty sure it's actually just yeah. my kneecap. Like yeah. it's just the it's actual weird kneecap. Goes, yeah, yeah, mate, but like, my knee. it, no, but like you know, it's coming from the back. Like you know, your back's out of whack. Your hips are you tight. I go, yeah, no, I understand that. But like, my knee's fucked. Mm. Like I need you to need you to take care of the knee first, then we'll work back up to the back. I'll never forget a, uh, a doctor at a footy club. I won't say which club or which doctor. Obviously, um, <laughs> whenever you had something wrong with you, you'd get these injections. And he was like, he, he thought that these things are revolutionary. So like it immediately fixed you. So I remember like having a full tear in my Achilles and he's like, mate, for some reason I had to get, I had to get wheeled out for the last game of the VFL game because the Bull Ants were going to make the final somehow. So I was like, mate. They, they were going to make the, we're going to make the top 12. Gonna, I just said the club. Anyway, we're going to make the, <laughs> we're going to make the 12. 
I was like, oh, mate, like my Achilles is like busted up. Like I can't go. He's like, no, 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 you'll be fine. We'll, we'll, we'll just put some, some of these injections in there and roll out. Next minute, I cannot feel my ankle at all for the first two quarters of the game. <laughs> That's how it ended for I me. I actually, you think that they were trying to get you through, but I actually think they were trying to like mess me up, stuff your ankle so you couldn't play the game. <laughs> Workers' um, comp, jokes on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. In all honesty, though, injections in general. No, you're one of those. I don't know why I'm going you? down this path, but no, 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 not not the bad injections. I'm talking just the, the oh. fixing injections. I've had some serious injections in my time, but there was one that killed. Like I'm talking. Worst experience that I've ever had in I terms of a medical is. procedure. Mm. And you would know this because we've both had and Achilles asshole. issues. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Achilles, yeah. No, it wasn't. wasn't oh, it, oh yeah. it must be that another doctor I saw. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was someone else, I think. <laughs> this one was in my Achilles and I remember he put um, the needle up through my heel, mm. like the top of my heel, oh. through – up the Achilles and it hit me in the bottom of the calf. And I remember sitting on the bench. I was laying on my stomach, sitting on the bench, like had my head in the pillow. And like, I can bench. remember, yeah, I was just on one of those like doctor bench. I remember just going like, I don't know if I'm going to make it through this. And I fainted. Like I just passed out from the pain. And that is where the, the I, I've always hated needles since then. Like I cannot cop a needle. And it's a reason why I'd never to the fact that heroin is not good for you. I just don't think that I could do that because of the, the needle factor of it. Yeah, no, bug of that. I just don't want to go near any needle ever again after my experience with that doctor that I spoke about. <laughs> um, mate, let's talk about getting out of COVID. I know you're excited. You're very, very excited. As you said, you're very booked up. What, what's plans? What, what's the first thing that you cannot wait to do once you get out of COVID-19? You know what? I've thought about this today. Like Everyone's obviously going to be catching up with each other, but like, I'm excited to go back to um, – like life as it was, like obviously the freedom that we were going to have, being able to see people like finishing work on a Friday and going for a few few frothies somewhere. But I'm also going to miss like not having to see anyone. Like I don't have an excuse oh. now to, to not see anyone. Like I can't say I'd love to, but COVID is here. Like yeah. I've got to think of a new reason Honestly, to not see people. You couldn't have taken the words out of my mouth anymore. It's like that underlying factor now is like you, you literally – are not going to be able to say no to doing anything in, uh, anymore. Like there's just, yeah. there's just no excuse to be going out. And I know for me that is that is scary. Mm. Um, I, I'm worried about that and I'm just going to have to come up with a few new excuses. So maybe if if anyone out there has a good excuse of what how to get out of doing something that you really don't want to do, because there's always going to be those people that want to catch up that you're not entirely keen on catching up oh, with. I don't know. Um, no. Not oh, looking at anyone in particular, but yeah, how maybe. how we get out of that is going to be very interesting to see um, how it happens because we have actually got someone that feels the same on this. Um, a, a very, very good man, a very mm. good man has sent in a video. And a friend of ours, a friend of the show, a fellow loose clogger, Isaac Rosé, has actually got a question. I know it's a bit early in the show for fan engagement, but we're, while we're on the topic of this, I thought it would be a good one to uh, to answer for him. Hey fellas, Isaac here. Love the show. Just got a uh, bit of a question for you that I think you boys might be able to help me out with. So, um, you know, since Melbourne's starting to uh, chill out a little bit and we can start to see our mates again, you know, when you, when you see a mate you haven't seen in ages, you're, you're absolutely stoked. You run up to him, give him a big hug and go, go, mate, how are you? And then, you know, once you get all that out of the way, there is, there is a few seconds of silence and just think, fuck, what do we actually talk about? So yeah, just wonder if you boys can help me uh, push through that uh, awkward period of uh, seeing your mate again. Anyway, cheers, boys. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Oh, I love Isaac. I love, I love how his, Isaac. his thanks was so much more energetic than anything else. Like, he was he's so stoked to be able to leave the house. He's tired of, of mum and dad's shit. The thanks. reason I love Isaac, the reason I love Isaac the most was he was genuinely, when he said at the start, big fan, I felt that. Oh, he, wasn't, he wasn't lying. So I just want to put that first. So thank you, Isaac, for your question. It is a great question. I don't think I have the answer for it because I'm struggling with that myself. Walking up to a bloke, let's play some. Let, maybe let's do some role playing here. Oh, I love role playing. Who are you? I'm Isaac. Okay, and who am I? Isaac's mate. No, you're um. Isaac's. You're Shane Larkin. Okay, Dr. Shane Larkin. No, Shane Larkin from episode one. We're helping him out with his <laughs> brother. Shane Larkin. Oh no, Shane. Isn't Shane Dr. Shane Larkin a doctor as well? No, that's anyway. <laughs> It's Peter Larkin. I'll be, oh, it's Peter Larkin. Oh, I'll be Shano. Okay. 
You can start if you want. Okay. Shano, how's it going, man? Oh, you want to speak to me, not my brother? <laughs> oh, anyhow, I guess he's not here, so I'll talk to you. Hey. Should we handshake? Hey. <laughs> no, high five. Oh, oh, no, I'm still... Oh. I'm still against the no shaking worries, man. hands just because of the COVID nineteen. So I, I still want to keep it, keep it real out there. If that's cool, yeah. So I'll blow your kiss um, then. Yeah, just keep your breath off me. So how you been? Oh, uh, you know, I've been pretty good. Kicking the footy <laughs> with my bro- <laughs> my brother. So happy to be outside though right now. Like, how have you been? What's what's been what's been happening? Obviously. In- oh, um, yeah. Thanks for asking. COVID nineteen. So I've been inside for a while. <laughs> So, yeah, it's just sort of like, what have you been up to? <laughs> Sorry, man. I just fell asleep when you were speaking. <laughs> that was so boring. Anyway, got to go, man. Out of COVID now. <laughs> so that's normally, that's how you're going to do it, approach it. Yeah. I think we nailed that. I think um, it's pretty good. Oh, you know what? Nah. That, that, um, the, the, the gesture of the handshake or a fist bump is probably the most oh, awkward bit out of all of it. Because so you can talk about anything awkward, for days, man. but it's the first initial grading, which is like the toughest thing to get through. I, um, the amount of times I've had that though. Yeah, either. I've I've had it a few um, recently as things like I don't I don't know. Everyone's very individual about like, do they really want to do a handshake in public? Do they do a fist bump, elbow, what it is? I'm like, I'll do a handshake if you want to do a handshake. I'm I'll run the gauntlet for COVID. But like, I've gone for a handshake and they've gone for an elbow, and then I just ended up grabbing like Anna's uncle <laughs> elbow. <laughs> I was like, oh fuck. So that's the initial one. I'm just going to blanket rule to myself. So if you see me in public, don't come at me with handshake, high five or fist bumps. Come at me with forehead on forehead. We can- yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I agree, dead set. <laughs> if you see me in public, dead set, just come lay one on me. Because yeah. I don't want to be stuck. I just want to kiss. I, I just want to kiss. I've not had one in ages, so I'm so keen for that. Yeah. If um if anyone is. But I don't want to be forcing anyone either. But back to Isaac's question, because I know we joke around, but I actually want to help him. Mm-hmm. The one question I reckon you want to stay away from is how have you been? Yeah, that's, don't that's, do that. When someone asks me that question, I'm like, how have you been? Well, what the fuck do you mean? What, like, what does that mean? You know, like, how have you been? If you if you cared, you'd know, okay? Mm-hmm. So I don't like that question. Um, I think you just got to ask. You got to remember, find something about the person. So this is a question. This is something I've always remembered. Ed Kerner, good friend of ours. Ed Kerno has notes in his phone, right, where when he meets someone, he writes down next to them an interesting fact about the person. Mm. So when he has a, when he sees that person again, you know, he might see them 50 metres away and he'd be like, okay, search for that person. It was, you know, Ed, green shirt. Well, okay, I won't say Ed because his name's Ed. Daniel, green mm. shirt, dog park guy. Yeah. And then he writes down like, last time we chatted – we spoke about his daughter's bar mitzvah, right? So then he goes up straight away and goes, hey, Daniel, how was your daughter's bar mitzvah on the weekend? It's a, it's a son anyway, but that note's wrong. I've got a son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good though. I would, I'd love to do that, but I just don't. That's just a lot of effort for me to do. Yeah, yeah. Mm, and 90% right. of the time I don't care. Dan, was- moving on. Um, that was weird. Um one thing COVID's been a little bit of a blessing of has been the amount of new hobbies that we've been around oh, and, and, so and career changes and, and business I've ideas. And of, um, the, the, yeah, the, the world of just the, the person who thinks has been incredible because well, so many people are coming up with these cool things. Like I've seen little, your little career uh, transition. You're a skater now, are you? You're the skate park hanging out? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be waiting to get a, a skateboarding deal for Met Knees. Is Tony Hawk going to pick you up? DC shoes. How's your skateboard going? I saw you did a, uh, you dropped into the bowl. That looked pretty cool. Yeah, no, I have been, I've been doing the old uh, Skatey 180 lately. Daniel. And the kids and, down um, there, they'd be loving it, seeing Dill Buckley roll in. They don't, they have no idea who I am. It's actually quite scary. It's actually quite the opposite because I want to, I've been, you know what I'm like, when I, when I get something in my head, all I want to do is that thing. And skating's that thing at the moment. I used to skate so much when I was a kid. And then so obviously footy came along and I became an, an AFL superstar and, you know, playing, you know, incredibly well most weekends. Just didn't allow me to become the professional skater I used to be. So now that I've finished that life and I'm mm. moving on, um, I've been going to the skate park lately and I've been loving it. 
It is so much fun. It is so much fun. Absolutely love it. But there is one thing that I really don't like about skating and it is the fact that you can't just ever go to the skate park and be the only person there. No, you can't. you got to go. If It look weird if you drive past skate park and there's only one guy there. Well, there's always a crowd of kids watching someone else it's, skate. Well, it's and, and exactly right. And that's the part that really hurts me is that I go to these skate parks and the skate park I go to, you can't – it's near my house, but I drive there because I don't want to skate the whole way. I'll be too tired. And I drive there. But the thing is you can't – see the skate park how full it is until you actually get out and skate over to it it's like a 200 meter skate over to it there's like one way there so you're skating to the skate park people can hear you coming you see it so i go there and go oh my god i just hope no one's there hope no one's there and i can't see who's there till i get there so often i rock up and i'm like 10 meters away and i gauge how many people's there and they've already sort of seen that someone's coming so they're gauging who it is it's a very tight-knit place and i sort of go shit it's <laughs> there's way too many people here and these guys are way too good. I don't know what to do, but I can't just stop and just turn around. So I go back and I walk in the skate park and I sort of just like stand there for like five minutes. They're all like friends. I just don't know what to do. I'm sort of just like standing at the skate park by myself and I'm too scared to do things because these guys are so much better than me. And I, I end up just standing there for like 10 minutes watching and they're sort of like looking at me going, what the fuck is this guy doing? Is he going to skate or is he just like staring at us? Yeah. <laughs> and then I end up just leaving. <laughs> Poor Jimmy's mum's like, oh, the stare is back. Someone call the cops. <laughs> well, I don't know what to do. It's too scary, man. I've got to get there like 7 a.m. to go and skate because I don't want to do it while people are there. They're too good. It's I just like embarrassing. Like, a, they probably got a crew, mate, and you're not part of the crew yet. Like, you're just a single wolf just, you know, rolling into the skate park staring at 15-year-old kids. Like, that's not cool to them, mate. Drop in, do no, some, get not. some big air. No, I know, but I'm not good enough to do that yet. That reminds um, me of a time, actually. Does, I don't know how why can I make be. friends at the skate park? I don't know, do, break it, like literally just do the biggest air you've ever done. And like you might not land it, but you get so much respect from those kids. <laughs> like fully break a hip. It reminds me of a time uh-huh. like, as you would know, I'm quite elite on the um, the old water sports, Dylan. And like <laughs> I used to, <laughs> used to um, go to the river and all the cool kids would wakeboard. And I'd be like, oh, that's so cool, like wakeboarding. And then I, I was only good at kneeboarding. So I had to wait for the cool wakeboarding kids to go away. So I can I just say, knee like, out. kneeboarding is not a cool thing to do. <laughs> kneeboarding so cool. is not cool. Kneeboarding is cool, mate. Ruins your knees. So what? You'd, cool. you'd have to wait for the wakeboarders to go away. It's sort of like, and I don't want to offend any kids these days because apparently scootering is cool. But when I was young, you know, you wouldn't be allowed to rock up to the skate park on a scooter. Not let it be. You shouldn't be riding a scooter anywhere at any age. Mm. Adults and Razor yeah. Scooters, that page is so funny yeah. on Instagram. Shout out to that page. We do well, like that. Um, um, so, yeah, there we go. That's my hobby. Um, have you picked one up? Yeah, I have, but I've kind of always done this. Sometimes, like, um, my mind goes in mysterious um, directions every day, Dylan, as you probably are very aware. I um, have and continued to do for a long time is I'll just write things in my notes on my phone that I think are funny, like, when I do them or when I see them. And I pulled out the. I haven't looked at the notes for a while, and I pulled them back out um, for this episode because just like I wanted to obviously talk about this. And if I ever do stand up down the track, I want to be able to refer to these notes and then maybe you know get a bit of a joke out of these. And I've just pulled up the notes, and some of them are, are absolutely terrible. But one that really stood out to me. This is all, this is literally what it says in my phone. Shopping. The funniest shit ever is in the condom and lube aisle. It's so awkward. You pretend you're looking at band-aids, but you're just waiting for the aisle to be clear. <laughs> I tell you all that's funny because I actually had to get band-aids the other day and I got the weirdest looks by everyone because I didn't know what size band-aids I need and everyone thought I was buying lube and condoms. But I'm telling you, if, you, if you've ever... If let's be honest. If that is your stand-up material, I'm worried. Mate, go honestly, if you're the shops next... Go and just stand that aisle for a bit and you'll see how many times the same people come up and down the aisle waiting for to be clear. Oh, it was the most awkward, man. All right, deal. Obviously, last week we had the big... I've got a cramp. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Wow. Are you okay? Obviously, deal. last week we had the big grand final show, man. Like, it'd be really rude of us not to speak about, um, you know, the week that was... In the grand final week, obviously the Tigers got up, 
Gary last game. Um, and obviously, I loved it so much. I'm still cramping a couple of days after, mate. So, what do you think of the game, mate? I, knew, I know you would have watched it there with little Tofu Princess. I did watch it with my little darling and, and Francesca as well. Mm. Um, game was good. Game was great. Look, if you ask me, I've got my serious hat on for a minute. We can't be having night grand finals. Mm. It's just not for me. It has to be a daytime thing. I'm, like, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a hopeless romantic when it comes to the grand final. Shoot me. Shoot me. But it has to be done during the day. Okay? Um, firstly. Secondly, Tigers won. Oh. Uh, fuck. You know, they're too good. They're too good. Dusty they're Martin. Good, wow. How good's that bloke? Um, only what we can dream of. You know, he was good. He was good. But was good. I know sadness. There, there is a bit, a bit of sadness and it's not the fact that they... One, there's also another f- a sad fact for you, my friend, because one of mm. your good, good friends, your really good friends, I'd say, yeah, and very close. your uh, ex-teammates, mm. and, and one would say nearly at one stage, no one would ever say this, but the most dynamic duo outside the centre square that's ever played the game. That's it. Old Gary joins me as the other Gold Coast icon to finally hang the boots up. It's a sad, sad day. Great career, obviously, Gary. I'll never forget the first time that I met him. Um, you know, he he could tell from the first moment we met that he was he was going to really take me under his wing, and that was true. You know, he didn't know my name for the first year, which was great. <laughs> um, I remember, you know, at footy training where you're like, mate, mate, when someone tries to handball drill, you got their name, like, yeah, mate, yeah, mate. That that yeah, mate, happened to me till like preseason 2012. Well, I got drafted in 2010, so. No, but in all seriousness, no, a great player, a great bloke. Some of the things that I witnessed up there on the coast, you just, you know, it's silly. The silly what he did for the game and, and how good he was. But I actually, I actually try to emulate a few things that he did, obviously being close to him. And when you see Gary, you think, oh, look, I'm going to just copy what this bloke does. Like, obviously, it's working for him. Whatever he's doing, I've got to do it because I want to be that good. So... I remember the first little thing was like the 2K we did the first time we did a 2K, you get drafted and then like three days later you're doing a 2K and, and Gary's there and he's trying to burn me in the fourth lap and I said, mate, <laughs> you're not going to be able to keep not, not up today, with me, Gary. mate. Yeah. Not, today. <laughs> not today. So he burnt me though in the last lap. But then we get to his <laughs> eating habits and he just like, he wouldn't want to put anything bad in his body and he was on this organic kick so he started eating raw broccoli. And I was like, oh, that's obviously very Crunchy. interesting. Eat raw broccoli. So any, anyway... I've gone to the supermarket and I've thought, you know what, fuck it. I've got to get raw broccoli if Gaz is doing it. I'm, not, I'm 18 at this point, 18. Like I'm still trying to mould my mind into an AFL player. So I'm like, fuck, I'll get it 18 anyway. Get some broccoli, get home. And my girlfriend at the time was like, oh, do you want to do to cook that? I was like, no, nah, no, nah, we don't cook it. You know, we, don't, we eat it raw as is what we're doing. So it's, uh, yeah, look, th- those things didn't work for me, obviously, but – to him, um, and he'd be listening to this, you know. We, we do love oh, you, Gaz, and, and thank you yeah, for uh, what you've done to the game. And um, we're going to miss you dearly, mate. We are. Um, in all seriousness, one of the best of all time, so we cannot even joke about that because no, he's a genuine, genuine superstar. superstar. And even just to do his shoulder on the weekend, come back on and just oh, he's, he's so good. You know he's where you so won't good. find him and you would never want to find him on the List Clover show? He will. N- we can categorically guarantee he's he definitely never be on not the show, on. and not because we don't want him on, just because it just yeah, it's an insult, uh, really. Yeah, it, it is. It's just yeah, it's not even a joke about it. One thing I do want to talk about, which was pretty cool. Oh, you've done pretty it. Cool. You've done it. Now remember last week we we go back a week and we talked. Can about I read the- minds? We talked yes. about predictions. Someone. Or a lot of people, I reckon, are going to swap boots at half time. Am I a prophet? You've done it. Maybe. So last week, deal. You've said you've you've called the boots that someone on either team. Maybe you say original either team. No, I said someone at someone before half time. We'll I think change I said, boots. We'll change boots. And lo and behold, Dusty's out someone, there changing. Dusty's out and there it changing. Just, it wasn't just once. No, nah, changed boots multiple twice. times. How'd was you know? he listening to the show? Yes. I think he might have been. I can How'd tell you know? right now he was. I don't know it for certain, but how could he have done that to change up that mindset? Richmond were down. They were down and out. It's at quarter time, at half time, and he's gone and changed his boots twice because he listened to the show, because he respects the show. 
essentially you've won. Now Richmond he's a flag. three time. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yeah. I agree. That's pretty cool. Have they, have they, have Brendan, Gale, and Co. called you or not? Not yet. No, I, I'm I'm letting them have a bit of time. They've obviously yeah, celebrated. Yeah, let them celebrate whatnot, it. I think that – look, look, I don't want the recognition. It's fine. It's, it's, it is what it is. But just to know that, you know, that some superstars of the game are tuning in is fantastic and it is good to know. But – in saying that, Dan, I, I'm not just stopping at that now. I've, this is a newfound talent that I can read into the future and oh. I can see things. So I'm going to start predicting some shit. What are you going to predict? Don't know yet. Nothing's come to me. But if people want to know something, just say they're doing something in the oh, future. I do this And they want to know. If they want to know something that's going to happen, they want to know the answer to something, let me know and I'll let you know what's going to happen. So this case slide into our DMs at List Cloggers. Has a lawsuit all over it. Let me tell you what's going to happen in the future because I am 99% sure that I'm a prophet. And I when do I get you out of my life? That one is a bit upsetting. <laughs> um, I Again, it, it's not just – I can't just cue it on. I've got to be in the right zone for it. So we'll, I'll give you an answer for that next week. But let us know. Let's close. If you need to know something, let me know and I'll let you know. I'll tell you um, what I really took away from the grand final more than anything. Um, obviously, great win from – the Tigers, Gary um, retiring. The best thing to come from the granny is the twos bloke celebrating hard with Fisher. For those who don't know, Fisher, the international DJ, you know, it was a surfer, now big time DJ. I'm losing it, the song. Everyone know that song. He's out there. He plays that. So obviously someone snuck him into the hub and said, look, the Tigers, he wouldn't know who the Tigers are. But he's like, mate, the AFL team, they've won a flag. Come DJ for him. Come party. And he said, you know what? I'm losing. I'll come in there. And he has. And then the amount of vision to come out of it. And sure, he was hanging around the big dogs like Dusty. Oh, he he was hanging it. around Lynchy, Rewalt. But some of these two blokes were just, they were all over him. Unbelievable. I, they, some of the blokes they hang, loved the after how, party so much more. Oh, how was the hard tag <laughs> in some of the twos players? On Fisher. The best thing was, I don't know who it was, but you could see Fisher had the, the jumper on. And it was like number like 49. <laughs> so I was thinking like, what... Young bloke blokes. has been absolutely just forced to give Fisher to his him. jumper. Like he probably didn't want to give that away, but he just knew that he had to give it. It was so good. It was just like, what's your thoughts on that? Like we, you know, say that. we're playing. Yeah, I love it too. Love we're playing it. a grand final, right? We're not even playing. That'd be us. What's your thoughts on a twos player being best on at the after party? Huge. And not it's even everything. not having not having one bit to do with the three peat and the dynasty of the of the flag. Well, well, that's it. Essentially, you're the 23rd best player. 100%. Equal 23rd best player. You are. You are. 22 <laughs> player. And this next in from there, whoever's the best off the field, that's you. That would 100% be us, though. If, like, Fisher, if we were the Blues and we win a flag with the Blues and Fisher comes in and we haven't played in the granny, you and I are hanging off him like a bad smell. I'm so, oh, I'd be absolutely, absolutely You would as well. You look, you'd try oh. and be his best mate. You, you want a drink, man? You want a drink? Nah, all good. All right, sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. sweet. My shout, my shout. My, you're not buying a beer tonight, mate. You are not buying a beer Can tonight. Can I get your number? You get your number. We'll go for a surf tomorrow. <laughs> Let me give you some fake number. Do you want to go to skate park? <laughs> want to hear my jokes about the blue bile? No, no, he wouldn't. Okay, anyway. He definitely wouldn't. Hmm. He definitely wouldn't. Um, right. Football's done now. Done, done. done. There's still the trade period and whatnot to come, so don't worry. We'll be, we'll be tracking that and, and throwing in some trades and, and some – riffraff and, and things like that. So don't worry. Obviously, it's still a hard time for some teams in finals, mm. Dan. We know all too well the list, list management is still happening and we are there to support and there to guide people through that. So Correct. Um, don't stress. We, we will not be going anywhere. No, don't stress. We've got, you know, plenty to talk about, you know, regardless of footy, no footy. We could go all day, really. We could. But the thing I will go all day Shouldn't. about, and it's back. <laughs> you, you won't believe God damn it, man. You won't believe it. <laughs> There's What's another back? rumor about you. Oh, now, if, if you had, didn't listen to the episode, now I had a, I had a rumor a couple of episodes ago that Dylan obviously went to the race in Bendigo. He was cashed up from when he was footy days. Obviously, he had money to burn. He bought the the outfit off someone, some bloke's back, and then got in trouble with some of the boys that he was hanging out with. Had to return it to the guy. The guy said, "Do you want your money back?" Dylan said, huh, "I don't need that because I've got so much cash." And the, Obviously, people have heard that, and you think it'd be, you know, a one-off thing. But obviously, your arrogance extends further than just Bendigo races. So well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear this riveting story now, again. I'm sure it's just true. before we we set the scene. 
if I off, you know, if I I go up to a bar and I see you there and I offer to buy you a drink, you're not going to say no, are you? Well, you'd, I, I wouldn't know what to do because you've never ever done that before. Exactly. You accept the drink. You say this is great. Like regardless of what you're going to get me right now, I'm going to just be a good bloke and drink it. And that brings me to to Joseph. Joey Lopez Gossip Girl LOLX inbox me. Oh, that sounds real. Well done. Mm, it's real. Okay. Hey, Dan. Polite. Just wanted to share something interesting that happened when I met Dill at a pub a few years back. Seems like a good bloke. I was in awe when I saw him, so to be polite and show my appreciation for him, I went up to him and introduced myself. After the initial introduction, I offered if I could buy him a beer. <laughs> What a bloke, am I right, Dill? Seems anyway, like a guy. he was polite and accepted my offer. And when I bought the beers back to give to him, he had an embarrassed look on his face. I said, what's wrong? He said, and I quote, I can't actually drink pints. That's too much <laughs> beer. Can I please have a schooner? I haven't stopped thinking about this since. Did I do something wrong? Can you please ask him if he now drinks pints? So... <laughs> A bloke has offered you a pint and you've knocked it back because you can't drink that much beer. Oh, Where look, do you get off, mate? Bendigo races, knocking back beers. Are you? That is, why are you so arrogant? No, okay. So, again, there might be some truth to that story, but the truth to the story is I would never have ever knocked back the beer, okay? But there is truth to this story in terms of Joey Lopez, um, mm-hmm. go- Gossip Girl, mm-hmm. he is right um, in the fact that I don't like drinking big beers. I just don't <laughs> I don't think it's necessary. I don't like drink. I, if, if, a schooner is a too big of a beer. By the time you get to the bottom of it, it's warm. I, my, myself, I like to drink a pot. A pot is a small beer for a small man. I get it down. It's cold. It's crisp. It's nice. Well, so the quicker you get I, it down, the quicker you can go home. No, I know, but I, I, if I have one schooner, I'll be literally two of them and I'm, I, I won't be able to wake up for three days. So I like to have small beers, pot, or if you're in New South Wales, it's a midi, um, which I live in New South Wales. So, um, yeah, just to let you know that. And I think people would agree with me on this. I, 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 if you go into the bar, I can't stand when you're in a, when you're in a shout with someone and they, and they bring back schooner sized beers big jugs of beers you just you look at them and you go that's too big that's too big of a beer for a man of my size I cannot I cannot drink that but you're going to go back and get three more of your other size beers yes so why don't you just drink the one big it's cheap it's cheaper too I think it's definitely more expensive it definitely is more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it's cheaper it's not cost effective at all mate you're, having, you're buying three times a beer Mm, yeah, okay. Technicality. Nice. I like so it. So, look, again, mm. that's another episode of the rumor file for you, Dylan. Okay, we'll put can that I just one go away. Back to that room. Back no. to back rumors are confirmed that they're true. <laughs> just- We're yet to miss on the rumors. If you have any rumors out there on Jill Buckley, if you've met him in the street, if you've ever had any type of engagement with him where you want to question something he's done to you or something about a situation, please send them to me. I will bring them up and we'll confirm them. Thank you. I appreciate it. We both appreciate the honesty and we can't wait to uncover a bit more about this man that we're so desperate to know about. Because at the moment, we don't know who you are, really. <laughs> but we us this clock, we're desperate to find out who's the real Dylan Buckley. I'm, you buy I'm just going to go back off and their back. just to just to my, you attacked my character there, and mm. I don't know where this story's come from because I don't remember that. And I would, if anyone that can please contest to this, if you have a good story about me, I'm sh- <laughs> I hope there could be one out there as well. You're allowed to send positive ones in too. Like, don't mm. be afraid to. We'll do share that. the positive um, ones. We will share the positive. I I won't say that one actually. That I had about you another one, but it's all good. There's another one, is there? There may have been another rumor that came through my desk, um, but we'll, we'll save them. For, we'll save them for later, mate. You know, we'll just we'll just wait, see what comes to my desk next week. If there's anything we need to get out there, we'll get out there. Oh, I don't like this game, Dan. I don't no. like this game. You're making me out to be a bad person, whereas I. I oh, no, you're like a good I'm man, Dylan. Oh, you know, you're you're uh, <laughs> you're very dear to me, and I'm always there to protect you. But when these things come up. I have to do rights for list cloggers. I have to make sure that we get these things out in the air, and I'd expect you to do the same. So if anyone okay, has well, anything if, if about me, any, yeah, please. If you've got any rumors about Dan, we'd love. Please, to I'm get more than happy to own up to who I am as a person. Yeah, that could be a, that could be pretty bad to be honest. Yeah. The most important part of the show is here, Dan. The most important part, and this is a part where we get. See, man, you going somewhere? The very important. <laughs> 
people on to answer their questions. Oh, yes, yes, uh, very. We have some incredible questions today. And the first one is from a loyal listener. Um, mm-hmm. It's a voice DM um, from Caitlin Bishop. So, Caitlin, please hit it. We love it. Let's go. I want to hear it. Hey, and I have an issue that you may be able to help me with. I'm currently doing Year 12 at a school in regional Victoria, and as you know, it's been a pretty tough year for us doing BCE. I need to submit a Year 12 quote to put in a school yearbook slash magazine, and I'm stumped for ideas. I thought you guys might be able to help me out. Love it. Good. Love, Caitlin. Love it. Uh, Caitlin, firstly, thank you for sending in your message. Congratulations on finishing Year 12. Great milestone in one's life, Dan. Would you agree? Oh, great, yeah. I, I almost got there once. Um, it was awesome just to see the finish line and, and pull out last minute. But, yeah, great effort, K-180. It's uh, very proud. Did you not finish? Uh, I, I limped across the line. Don't tell me you gave up. I didn't give up. I just went half arse at it. I did, I did year 12 over two years and I just really did not. <laughs> that is the biggest... Loser move Rich ever. move ever. You cannot do it, – it's honestly not that hard. Like even year 12 you can get through really minimally and you try yeah, to – Yeah, I was actually making years. AFL footy my priority of mine and it paid off. I went pick 10, so thank you. <laughs> mm, laugh at that. Laugh at pick cool. 10. Um, in, in, term of, in terms of Katie, let's help her out because I want to get a good quote in there. Mm. And you know I love my quotes. Um, have you got anything for her? Of course I do. High school's pretty easy. It's, it's like riding a bike except – the bike's on fire and the ground's on fire and everything is on fire because school is hell. Something those long those lines, whatever you want to do, it's all good. Wow. That's that's not <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know about that. I am not mm. sure I'm not sure about that one. I was thinking more of a positive sort of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's a positive. On it, okay, I think a positive one. Then. Yeah, um, positive, oh, yeah. positive. Oh god. All right then. Um, <laughs> mm, it's gonna be hard for me. You just say something, something just quick, short, and sharp, like "I'm out of here. See you later. See you all in ten years. Drip beers on me." <laughs> Sorry, we couldn't help out there a little bit more, Katie. It's a hard one. Try really and it's a hard back one. To you. We, we try. We love the questions. We're not always going to have the answer, but we're going to try our absolute hardest, and that's mm. one thing that we can promise. It's something we can promise. You should, um, Katie, actually leave like a. You should leave like a clue for everyone. So, like with the teachers and other students, to try and look for something that you haven't placed. Like, just say something like, "It's under room 60. If there's a room mm. sixty, and then everyone's like, "Oh my god, Katie put something under room 60. and then They'll for years it. people always look there. Yeah, <laughs> but really, no, I like it's just that. nothing that, you just that said. Is good. It's just all like that this, like it's in the music room. I'm just Katie's up or something. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that is good. Yeah. God, moving on to a more serious topic and something we're both very passionate about. It's that time of the year, uh, November. It's both, it's coming up upon us. Obviously, men's health, uh, mental health, prostate, testicular, just men's health in general. We're mm. both passionate about this. You taking part this year? Are you going to be doing anything in terms of Movember ish? Is that a uh, insult of my ability to grow? Grow um, facial hair a little bit, a little bit. But you don't have to grow. You can also run. You can do whatever you like. Well, I, well yeah, I grow more of a uh, a moustache than you, a moustache than you. Mm, I don't know about that. Mm, think I do. Think I do. I don't know about that. Definitely do. But no, as you said, mate, it's a uh, a great cause. A lot of people. Um, I don't see a lot of women rocking mo for November, but a lot of men, obviously. Do get involved in November. What's to do obviously around mental health, suicide prevention, prostate, testicular cancer, all things that men go through and, and have to deal with at one point or another. So I know you and I will be getting very much involved, mate. Um, mm. It's a great cause, and, and we're going to try and raise as much awareness as we can. I think, you know, obviously we will think we have a bit of a family here if we can get the list cloggers in involved with us to, to raise as much funds as or and not if even so funds but awareness about such a big topic then that'll be amazing so I know that we'll plan something we'll get some links sorted out yes uh, and all that to uh, all do it together for uh, this November coming up for sure mate very important to us very important to everyone just to to be on top of this um, we're in the works of working up a bit of a team uh, myself, Dan, and, and another member. Yeah, so just join up. We'll, we'll work something out. And yes, on a serious note, that is very important to us. So we will be touching on that throughout the time. And, and hopefully with COVID restrictions and whatnot works out, we can actually get together and host some sort of event or something like that that we can mm. start raising some money. Dan, it's another, been, uh, another episode four. 
we we got through it again. Um, we're still working our way through this. We have no idea what we're doing. So we no, want your no. input. We love you all. Hopefully next week, Dan, as well, we're going to be back in the studio. So that's going to be – I'm going to be able to see your big, big head, your big nose, your big yes. face, and your big your big hug. And we're going to be able to sink a couple of um, cold ones together, and it's yeah. going to be nice. I'm really looking forward to that. I can't wait to touch lips with you, my lips. That's all we have time for on this episode of List Cloggers, episode number four. We will see you all next week. Love you. Bye. He's celebrating, he's celebrating a 